Hello folks, welcome to the Dark Table Landscapes video. In this one we're going to be processing this shot sent in by uh, Tony, Tony Barrett, one of my viewers, and he would like to uh, bring out the different greens and browns uh, and to create a nice harmonious whole. Um, we're going to look and see if we can do that in just a moment. If uh, editing your photos is something you're interested in, let me know in the comments and uh, it's something I may be doing more of, but we'll see how popular it is. But for now, let's get going with processing Tony's shot. So this is obviously taken kind of a midday overcast skies, so it's very flat light. So whenever you have that kind of situation, it never really pays off to try and introduce light where there isn't light or anything like that. It just, it rarely works. It always looks fake. So uh, generally the best way to, to go is just working with what you've got. Here we've got quite a lot of variation in texture and colour, so we'll see what we can do to bring that out. Maybe uh, taking a leaf out of uh, the video that I did the other day on blue skies, kind of going for more of a, a filmy faded look to add some interest. So let's see what we can do. So we'll start with the, the basics, uh, lens correction. I don't think there's much distortion going on here at 32mm, but we'll sort that out. And we'll crop. I think we're going to take a leaf out of uh, Toshio Shibata's book and crop the sky completely out because it kind of doesn't add much to the image. It's not particularly amazing in terms of what it's adding to the image. So if in doubt, crop it out. So I'm going to pull that right in. And there's not much going on this side of the image either. It's mostly an empty hillside. So I'm going to pull that in as well. There's also a very bright white bit of wood there that's kind of draws the eye let's put this cyclist right on that third line there we go it's automatically a kind of a more intimate shot if you like it's uh it's closed it right in so that's good it's added some depth so let's do our white balance let's see what our auto auto setting gives us it's a little blue uh the scene is obviously very green it's Britain in the summer and it's very very green for most of the most of the time uh, not my favorite time of year to shoot I much prefer autumn uh, so I think the green is probably confusing things a little bit so let's go for uh, kind of a neutral gray that's more like it it's more natural looking and let's go for exposure maybe bump the exposure up a touch because we're getting into crushing territory and then we'll go up to sigmoid just move this along raise our target black a fair bit for a bit of fade if we're going for a filmy kind of look okay so if you want to bring out some different greens we need to add some color contrast so we can do that with the contrast equalizer and normally you see me working in the luma uh, tab and i will do a basic clarity adjustment while I'm here so we'll just roll the mouse wheel drag up for a bit of clarity but I'm also going to go into the chroma tab in the middle and with this we can increase color contrast as well so I'm going to keep the uh, area of effect large and I'm just going to drag the whole curve up which will just kind of give some differentiation in the colors albeit there's not much because they're all very green every little helps We'll call this clarity and color. I'm going to duplicate this or make a new instance rather. And we'll just do a quick texture boost as well. It's fine. So if we turn those both off, you can see how we're already just bringing in a little bit more texture and variation. And now I think we'll start to add our kind of filmy filmy look so if we go for color balance rgb we'll do a little bit of contrast work first so boost some vibrance contrast actually pretty good uh, a little bit of saturation and let's see what we can do here mid-tones punch up a little bit drop the highlights a touch and then we'll start doing some kind of a high level split toning so normally i would cool the shadows and warm the highlights i'm going to go first kind of a reverse on this i'm going to warm the shadows so i'll go for a kind of a warm orange and i'm going to give the highlights a kind of a teal treatment 
that filmy look. So maybe slightly towards green. So we're mainly affecting the water here in the river in the road. That's perhaps a little bit strong. Let's just pull that back. Less is more as always. It's my watchword. There we go. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll further enhance that filmy look with some more color calibration. So we'll make a new instance of color calibration. So the first one is just for our white balance. You can use it for other things and you can use it as a, as a channel mixer. So uh, in this case, we're going to go for the green channel and we're going to reduce the amount of green that is being contributed in the green channel. And then we're going to compensate for that with adding it into the R and B, the red and blue. Otherwise we're going to affect our kind of our white neutrality, if you like. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to type in 0.8. So that sets the slider to 0.8 and you can see we've gone very red because less, less green is being contributed there. And let's compensate by adding 0.1 to here, 0.1 to here. Okay, so you can see we've kind of just tinted our green just a touch. It's made it a little bit more brown and just brought out the variation in the trees here. And you can fiddle around with these endlessly to get various different effects. Uh, you may have seen me use the grey slider before now to increase contrast in skies and things. And for some slightly more targeted um, color adjustments, let's go for a color equalizer. And I suspect we're going to be working around there. Yeah, uh, greens. Yeah, okay, we're pretty good. I'm going to just drop these down towards yellow a touch again for that filmy look. It's perhaps a little too yellow. We drop the saturation a touch as well. Okay. And I think the whole thing could do is some more contrast in general. So let's do a slightly different way. We'll do tone equalizer. This is a nice quick way. Right click and let's choose contrast tone curve soft. So that is a preset that just gives a general S curve if you like for contrast so let's see the difference that makes it's maybe a little strong so let's just lift up we're going to make the make the s curve shallower essentially cool reduce the effect there we go and i think a vignette would be in order as well just to create some depth no, i don't want vignetting actually i want exposure there we go Right click for a new instance. Let's go for an oval. I want quite a strong vignette, but heavily, heavily blurred. So uh, let's drop it down and flip it around so that the effect is outside our mask. Drop it in, but then we'll make this much bigger. We'll feather it as well so it's Quite a heavy effect. Yep. And I think I will do the same thing again. We will uh, click on draw mask here, right? It says no mask used. We'll just use the same mask again. So it's in exactly the same area. And uh, I'm not going to reverse the polarity this time. I'm going to keep the mask inside and I'm going to just increase exposure a touch. And that makes for a, a stronger vignette effect. I might just roll it in a little bit. There we go. So there's our dark vignette. There's our brightening vignette. I think the dark is maybe a touch strong. There we go. And now we'll just do some sharpening. Lens deeper medium. It's fine. New instance, and we'll do local contrast fast. It's a tad strong, so we'll go for a uniform mask. Drop that down. Say 50% and see how that looks. 
yeah, that's better, not too much. And then finally, brain. Maybe even a slightly bigger frame. Let's go uh, let's go 10%, which I think is actually the default. That's nice. And perhaps a bit more fade in order, I think. Let's bring up our target black. There we go. So here's our before and after. A very flat uh, shot thanks to the overcast light and obviously the nature of a raw file. And I've gone for a kind of a slightly more saturated filmy look. Uh, enhance the color contrast so we've got more range of tones of green and brown. Add a little bit of split toning for a bit of extra punch. And obviously our normal adjustments like sharpening and that kind of thing. Okay, folks, that's the final image. Thank you again to Tony for sending it in. And again, if you'd like to see more viewer submissions processed on the channel, let me know in the comments. Uh, and do make sure to subscribe. And if I if I do carry on with doing new submissions, I'll uh, I'll post a text link for submission in uh, the channel. So do subscribe so you catch that. And uh, otherwise, that's it for this video. Uh, happy processing, and I will catch you in the next one.